Hello China at one hundred three point two Dublin City FM. The program is co-hosted by UCD Confucius Institute for Ireland. MTN producer and presenter. So here we also have Daniel and Xinyu. How are you guys? Good, good. Not too bad. Okay. So what are you going to talk about today? Well, just hand over to us. We will know soon. Okay, no problem. Just one more thing. Hey, folks, don't forget to drop us a line if you want to have your own say in our program. The email address is hello china at dublin city fm dot i e. Looking forward to hear from you. And it's your time, Xinyu and Daniel. Thanks, Tin. Um, let's start from、um, Daniel. What kind of movies do you like? Um, I like watching kung fu movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Enter the Dragon, and Shanghai Noon. Mhm.、Mm、so, who are your favorite actors then? Well, there's loads of famous Chinese martial arts actors, but my favorites are definitely Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Oh, Bruce Lee! Yeah. He's pretty famous. He was the first Chinese actor to break into Hollywood. Well, how do you know that? <laughs> I guess everybody knows that. I saw his star on the Avenue of Stars when I went to Hong Kong. What do you know about him? Well, apart from what you just said,、mm -hmm. I know that he's considered one of the most influential martial artists of the 20th century, and also that he's a cultural icon known throughout the world.、Mm -hmm. I know that he portrayed Chinese nationalism in his films and revolutionized the world of martial arts and kung fu movies.、Mm -hmm. He was also named by Time Magazine as one of the hundred most influential people of the 20th century. Oh, you must be a big fan of him to know all that. <laughs> kind of. So, what movies should I check out to see Bruce Lee in action? Well, he's in loads of movies, but my favorite one is Enter the Dragon. Well, I actually. I think I've seen that one already. He plays a kung fu master who is asked by a mysterious agency to investigate a criminal in it. I think it's the last movie he made, and he died before the film's release. Yeah, that's it, all right.、Mm -hmm. The criminal is called Han. He holds、yeah. a tournament for skilled fighters on his private island. Lee's character enters the tournament and is threatened by Han's criminal organization. Oh, I definitely need to watch that one again. Sounds like a classic. Yeah, you definitely should. You、mm -hmm. should also check out some of Jackie Chan's movies. He's a brilliant martial arts actor as well. Yeah, I love his action comedy films like Project A and Rush Hour. Yeah, you're right. He's really good at putting a light-hearted edge in kung fu films.、Mm -hmm. I really like Shanghai Noon. It's really funny, and it's got Owen Wilson in it as well. Yeah. Hey, Dan, do you remember the Dublin Chinese New Year Festival from our last program? Yeah, of course. Twelve movies will be screened over seven days during the festival. If you want to watch kung fu movies, there are quite a few. I think you can check out. Hey, that's great. So, can you tell me about a few of them? Sure.、Um, there's one called Bodyguards and Assassins. It's about a kamikaze mission to protect China's. First president during a state visit to Hong Kong. In 1905, the revolutionary Sun Wen plans to visit Hong Kong to plot with Tong Menhui members. Their aim is to overthrow the corrupt and crumbling Qing dynasty. A group of assassins is sent to kill Sun, however, and put an end to the rebellion. Sounds pretty interesting. Do you know who acts in the film? Is Jackie Chan in it? Oh no, Jackie Chan is not in the film, but Donnie Yen is in it. Have you ever heard of him? Nope. Well, he's another famous Chinese martial arts actor. I really like his kung fu movies. I guess he must be pretty famous in China then, huh?、Uh, yeah, he is. Well, I'll definitely check out some of his movies then. You should. Bodyguards and Assassins features an all-star cast and won Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor at the 2010 Asian Film Awards. Wow. So <laughs> Shenyu, have you any other movies you could recommend to me? Yeah. I should definitely watch as many as I can during、of、this film、course. festival. Of course. You can also watch Ip Man One and Two. They've both got Donnie Yen in them. I watched both of them in China. You shouldn't miss either of them. Ip Man One and Two, got it. So what are they all about then? Well, Ip Man series is semi-biographical account of Ip Man. He's the mentor of iconic legend Bruce Lee. The mentor of Bruce Lee. Yeah. She、so、must be even better than him at kung fu. Yeah, Ip Man was the first martial arts master to teach them the art of Wing Chun. Though he's not as famous as Bruce Lee throughout the world. Wing Chun, what's that? Some kind of kung fu. You're right. It's a Chinese martial art for form based on self-defense while utilizing both striking and grappling, and specializing in close-range combat. I didn't realize there were so many styles of kung fu. Yeah, of course there are. Yip Man One focuses on events in his life that took place in the city of Foshan during the Second Sino-Japanese War, and Yip Man Two picks up after the events of the early film, concentrating on Yip's movements in Hong Kong under British colonial rule. 
The second film focuses on his attempts to spread the discipline of Wing Chun and puts him up against rival practitioners, including the local master of Hanga martial arts. Wow, cool! I'll definitely check those out. You should. Sounds like I have a good few movies to watch during this Dublin Chinese New Year festival. Yeah, I promise you won't be disappointed, Dan. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching them. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about kung fu. Well, great! You're going to teach me some kung fu then? <laughs> no, no, no! I'm not exactly what you call kung fu. Master Dan. So if you're not teaching me kung fu, what are we going to do today? Well, actually, we are going to talk about Shaolin kung fu and the Shaolin Temple. Oh, wow, Shaolin kung fu. Yes, it is one of the most famous kinds of martial arts, and it is practiced by monks under the special Buddhist culture of the Songshan Shaolin Temple. It is in Dengfeng City, Henan Province. Why do monks practice kung fu? Well, Dan, have you ever heard of Da Mo? I don't think so. Well, he was the Buddhist monk and introduced Zen to China. You know Zen, right? Yeah, yeah of course.、Mm-hmm. Zen is a school of Mahayana Buddhism. It emphasizes experiential wisdom in the attainment of enlightenment. Many years ago, when Da Mo visited the Shaolin Temple, he noticed the monk's lack of exercise, which led to poor physical and mental health. So he introduced kung fu to the Shaolin Temple. Temple, which was later, you know, called Shaolin Kung Fu. Oh, I see.、Mm-hmm. So Kung Fu was originally a way of doing exercise rather than a fighting form. That's right. It was developed initially as a stretching exercise between lovers sitting in a stationary position, and was used to improve monks' concentration. These strengths eventually evolved into a fighting form. You know. Cool. That's a pretty interesting story. Yeah. So does kung fu actually always promote justice, just like in the movies? Well, actually, there are some exceptions, but、um, for the most part, I would say yes. Shaolin monks once famously used kung fu to save the Tang Emperor. Really? Yeah. So can I see the monks practice when I go to the Songshan Shaolin Temple? It's funny, you know. Every time I watch these kung fu movies, I always want to take off kung fu, but I don't really know if I'd be able to. Hey, Dan, it's never too late to learn kung fu, okay? But、um, I would recommend you stop by the village nearby the temple. You will see youngsters training at the various schools nearby. Children of all ages can be seen spinning in the air, high kicking, lunging with spears, and sparring all around. It's a pretty amazing sight. Wow, sounds great! I'll、mm-hmm. definitely go and see that. Yeah. Is there anything else interesting you'd recommend? Well, if you're looking for somewhere quiet, the meditation garden is a nice place to relax. There's this hallway that wraps itself in a square around the garden, and there's a terrace to sit and contemplate.、Oh, yeah. So, um, the hallway offers the observers insight into some of the colorful characters of Buddhist lore, with statues of arhats stretching their limbs and showing off their green skin. Green skin.、Mm-hmm. Wow. I definitely have to go see that then. Yeah, you should. And、um, if you have time, there's another must see. It is the Forest of Pagodas, and、um, also check out the famous Zhongyue Temple. It's a Taoism temple which was originally built for the purpose of worshiping the Mount Songshan. Mount Songshan.、Mm-hmm. That's one of the five sacred Taoist mountains, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way,、um, the Taoism I mentioned just now re- refers to a variety of related philosophical and religious traditions that have influenced Eastern Asia for more than two millennia. We mentioned last time, remember, Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now back to your question. Mount Songshan is one of the five sacred Taoist mountains, while each of them represents an element in Taoism belief that the world is made. Made of five elements. You want to have a guess? Yeah, I actually think I know this. It's、really? earth, water, wood, fire, and metal. I think, yeah. Oh yeah, Daniel, you're right. How did you know that? <laughs> I just guess it's general knowledge. <laughs> so, what does Mount Songshan really represent then? Oh well, it actually represents the earth because of its natural beauty and geological importance. The twenty famous scenic sites on the mountains all have spectacular peaks and valleys, caves, waterfalls, springs, and forests. Oh, seems like there's loads of good places to go. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Shenyu, I heard that monks only eat vegetables. Is that really true? Yes, it is traditional commandment developed thousands of years ago that they can't eat meat and drink wine. But I think nowadays some monks do eat meat and drink wine. Though you know, the most of them still keep the tradition. What's more, they use laptops and mobiles just like us, which was totally unexpected a few years ago. Wow, so they live pretty normal lives then, huh? Yeah. I can't imagine a life without meat, wine, laptops, and mobiles. Me neither. But the vegetarian dishes the monks have are different from the usual ones. 
Really? So what's the difference then? Well, these dishes are vegetarian, but they have the taste and texture of meat. If you can't live without meat, you can fill your stomach into having a good time by trying these kinds of dishes. You want to have a go? It sounds like a good idea. Where can I try this sort of food? Um, maybe some Chinese restaurants, but um, the only place I know for sure is nearby the Shaolin temples. Okay, I definitely have to go to Shaolin Temple now. Yeah, absolutely. Dan, do you know where we're going next time? Yeah, I think I heard Sam talking about heading to Sichuan Province next week. He told me about some of the delicious spicy food there. Wow, spicy food! I'm looking forward to it as well. Anyway, we should hand over to Tian. She's going to teach you some basic Chinese. Okay, thanks, Daniel and Xinyu. This is actually our fourth program. Daniel, do you think you know more about China now? Yeah, I think I've definitely learned some stuff. I know a lot more about Chinese Buddhism, Taoism, and Kung Fu, and I definitely know some of the sites I should go and see if I go to China. So, do you know there's a big Chinese festival last week? Yeah, I heard my Chinese friends talking about it. It's Chinese New Year, right? Yes, yes. Did you celebrate it? Um, to be honest, not really, but、oh. I know a little about it. Oh, okay. So anyway, last week I taught Fiacra a most profitable sentence in Chinese. Do you know what is it? Um, I remember something about a red pocket, right? Yes, you are right. It's 新年好 Happy New Year. 新年好 Yes, I said it's profitable because if the Chinese children say it to their relatives, I mean mature relatives, there is a big chance that they can get a red pocket with some money inside. Oh, wow! So I should say it to my relatives then. 新年好 That's it. 新年好 Yes. So today I'm going to teach you another one. Uh, not profitable this time, but very popular though. Okay, let's let's hear it then. Okay, it's 恭喜发财恭喜发财 Yes. Literally, it should be translated like um translated. I mean, like wish you could be lucky and rich. Okay, it sounds pretty good. I should say it to my <laughs> friends then. But do you think that this sentence sounds a little bit money worship? Um, I'm not sure. I like the sound of it. Okay. Anyway, if we want to know the deep meaning of this sentence, I should probably tell you a story. Uh, it's in a first supermodel contest in China, and it is a.、Uh, I remember it's the final competition. The last ten models were required to answer a question. Uh, their answer will be very decisive. So. I remember the question is like, if you can only have one thing among richness, intelligence, and love, what do you want, Daniel? What is your answer?、I、what do you want? Intelligence, probably,、uh, love, richness. It's tough. I'd probably go for love because I'd say that would keep you happiest over the long run. Yes, the same answer with me because love is really important part of my life. But I remember five of those girls picked intelligence. Because they want to be clever, I guess. Four picked love, just like us. But only one girl. She said she would pick up the richness. When I heard that, I was like, "Ha!、Huh, money worship." I looked down upon her immediately. But her explanation is really special and、uh, I guess thought-provoking. She said, "I don't think richness can only refer to money. I can say I'm rich in love." So I guess she's right. There's no definition of richness. It's just kind of inner feeling, you know. As long as we feel that we are rich, then we are rich. Probably, Daniel, you don't have even one coin in your pocket. But if you go outside, take a breath of the fresh air, and enjoy the summer breeze, then you are rich. Well, I never really thought about it like that, but yeah, I guess you're right. Yes.、Uh, have I just said too much about the story? I think the story is pretty good. I think the story is good. Okay, so let's just review the sentence. 恭喜发财 Okay, 恭喜发财 Wish you good luck and rich. 恭喜发财恭喜发财 Anyway, hope you have a better understanding of this sentence now. 恭喜发财 Uh, Daniel, do you want to learn one more? No yeah, story this time. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's hear one more then. Okay, this is 万事如意 What does that mean? Uh, one means ten thousand. Shi means thing. Rui is a word. It uh, it means as you wish. So put it together, it means hope everything goes as you wish. Okay, let me try it. One shi ru yi. Yes, one shi ru yi. One shi ru yi. Again, one shi ru yi. One shi ru yi. Yes, that's it. So put what all we have learned together. It should be like 大家好新年快乐，恭喜发财，万事如意。It's pretty long. 
<laughs> yeah, I know it's a big challenge. <laughs> um, 大家好，新年快乐 What's、yeah. the, the other bit again? Ah,、uh, it's 恭喜发财 The story, 恭喜发财 You、okay. need to remember this. Okay, I got it. 大家好，新年快乐，恭喜发财。